Hi guys, welcome to Junk Journal Inspirations. My name is Emily. So a while ago, or last week, I can't remember how long it's been now. Um, time just sort of uh, runs together after a while. Anyway, I did a swap um, where I made an, uh, a junk mail envelope journal. And um, I will link uh, either, I, probably at the end, um, to the flip through so you can see exactly what it looks like when it's finished, if you have not already. Um, but I've had a few people ask if I would do a tutorial on how I made it. So that's what I'm starting today. This will definitely be a multi-part um, video because there is a lot, you know, to be done <laughs> and there's no way I can get it into one video. So um, today I wanted to focus on the items that you will want to gather if you want to craft along with me. Um, if you don't want to craft along with me and you want to watch all the videos first, I totally get it. That is how my brain works. Um, but if you do want to craft along, by all means, um, you know, that would be awesome. And I just wanted to show you kind of what, what you want to gather um, so that you're, you're ready. Now, mine ends up being... I think the one that um, I made before was nine and three quarter inches tall by six and a half inches wide. Um, this one um, is gonna be 10 inches tall by six and a half inches wide um, because of the size of an envelope that I chose. Um, it was too tall uh, to fit in the other you know, um, dimensions. But that being said, you can make this any size you want. Um, you do not have to use the sizes that I use. You do not have to use the types of envelopes that I'm using. Um, you can, you know, customize this to whatever you want it to be. Um, I'm just going to show you the, you know, um, specifically what I made for the swap. Um, if you have questions about, um, you know, how to change it up or anything like that, please please don't hesitate to leave me a comment or send me an email. My email is in the box below. Um, I am, that's, that is kind of like a, you can always do that. That's a blanket thing. I love to receive comments. Um, I love to be able to help if I can. So feel free if you ever have any questions um, to contact me wherever you feel comfortable. Um, you can also contact me on Etsy if you'd like. Um, all right, so let's get started with what you want to gather. Now, I'm going to move this pile of craziness off to the side a bit. And let's start with the cover, the front and the back cover. So you'll need what I used um, or, or, or am using is uh, Tim Holtz. Um, card sock, double-sided. I think this is the memorandum, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. So you'll want two 12 by 12 pieces of whatever card stock you want to use. Um, it doesn't have to be double-sided. It can be. It can be whatever you want. Um, two 12 by 12 pieces, if you're going to follow along with the dimensions I'm using. All right, now for the front cover... This started out um, 12 by 12, right? Let me, uh, give me one second. I'm going to zoom out because I don't think you can see all of this at one time. Okay, that's better. <laughs> all right. So this started out um, 12 by 12. I did not cut anything from the width. It is still 12 inches. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure. Did I cut anything? I don't think so. I think my ruler is just a little bit off. Um, but the height is a uh, cut to 10, uh, 10 inches. So I cut off two inches um, and you'll, you know, kind of want to look at your card stock or paper, you know, um, to see if there's a specific, you know, just cut it accordingly. Like I wanted to make sure that this flower was on the front cover, um, you know, that kind of thing. So this is actually going to be what you see of the, of this particular piece of paper, right? Um, this piece here, and I cut off um, after I folded it so that it's six and a half inches, right? 
for my front cover. I cut off, um, that's about, oh, probably a quarter of an inch from the top and the bottom of just this piece. So if you can see what I mean here, okay? And the reason I did that is because our envelopes are all gonna be sort of built around this large envelope that I chose, okay? And my front cover is going to attach to that large envelope. So I needed to make sure, oops, that my large envelope, um, you know, that the size of the large envelope, that that flap would fit inside there, okay? So that's the front cover, all right? I hope I'm not confusing you. It'll make sense as we keep going. I just wanted to explain why I cut that down and I'll talk about it a little more in a bit. All right, so all of our, uh, we'll get to that in a second. I'm not even gonna, you know what? I'm not even gonna do that. So that's our front cover. The back cover, I cut down, it is again, 10 inches, 10 inches tall. Okay, and I cut it down to seven and a half inches wide. So we want the cover to be six and a half inches, right? I added an inch and then I scored it. So here's our six and a half inches. I scored it so that there's a half inch spine and then another half inch um, piece that's sort of extra, okay? The reason I did that is this is our front cover. After we get all of the envelopes built onto this large envelope and attached um, to this flap, okay, this is our front cover. We're going to attach the back cover like so, okay? So it's gonna overlap. If you see, I've got it so that, hold on, okay. So you see the spine here. It's kind of hard to hold it together, but we've got the spine, right? And then this extra flappy half inch is going to glue onto the front cover. And then we'll cover it with either fabric or lace or something um, to make it even more secure. Okay, I hope that this is making sense so far. Basically, just gather your 12 by 12 card stock and cut it down um, to the dimensions that I specified. Um, I will, we can go over that again. Um, let's go over that again. Okay, if you're making notes, front cover, leave it 12 inches wide, cut it to 10 inches tall, okay? Score it at six and a half inches for your actual cover. This flap needs to fit inside the largest envelope that you choose to use, okay? In this case, I had this window envelope and it was just, uh, I think it's, uh, it's about nine and three quarter inches, okay? So your flap needs to fit inside there, okay? So you'll need to cut off from the top and the bottom so that it's centered, however much you need to cut off to meet that height requirement of that envelope, okay? Oh, I really hope that I'm not confusing you. Okay, so that is the front cover piece. The back cover piece, you're going to cut to 10 inches tall, okay? And seven and a half inches wide. You're gonna score it. What I did is I put it on my scoreboard like this, okay? I scored it six and a half inches and it's seven inches. So that gives you a half inch spine and a half inch flap that will glue to the front cover, okay? All right, moving on to the envelopes. 
Um, this is going to be the, like, the, the envelope that we build upon, okay? Um, what I did is I trimmed off um, the flap and, you know, any excess pieces. I will will take care of this later. Um, and I wanted this one to be a top loading, um, top loading pocket once this is attached. Okay. So it'll be a top loading pocket. Um, that's up to you. You can make it a side loading pocket, whatever works for you. Sorry, my printer decided to do some cleaning or maintenance or something, if you can hear that. All right, so this will be, you don't want this to be bigger than whatever you make your cover, okay? So if you're doing a smaller version of this, you want your largest, widest, tallest envelope to fit inside the dimensions of your cover, okay? So in my case, it's nine and three quarter inches tall and about five and three quarter inches wide. So that perfectly fits within my, my parameters. Now I have um, other envelopes here. The first one I have is just a mini um, CD envelope. It's been tea dyed, okay? I have just a smaller envelope that is six and a half by a little over three and a half. I have another um, junk mail window envelope. This one is nine and a half. It's just a standard 10, number 10 envelope, I think, by four and a quarter. I have a coin envelope. Okay, so it's just a, just a regular coin envelope. Again, you don't have to use the same size or the same kind of envelopes that I'm using. Uh, this one's a little over five by three and a half. And then I think this is another similar to number 10, nine by nine by four. Um, okay, so you wanna just choose, so the way I did this, let me think about the best way to explain this. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't wanna be confusing. Um, actually, I think this one is gonna go here. Okay, so we're gonna build, and I'm not gonna actually do this today. I'm just kind of showing you sort of how this is gonna go together so you can gather your supplies. And then we will move along um, in the next video. So you want some of your envelopes, at least, to have flaps. Um, this, this large one actually would be better not to have a flap. Um, pretty much all of the other ones really do need to have flaps because that's how we're going to attach them um, to our larger envelope. So for instance, um, let me, let me think for a second. This I attached, nope, nope, nope. That's not what I did. I have to, I have to think about it cause I don't have the actual journal with me anymore. And, um, yeah. Okay. So like I would put this larger envelope and it will get attached inside here. Okay. Um, I'm going to need to cut down my, my flap so it doesn't, um, show or attach it and then add a piece of paper. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but we'll get to that. So this one will, will attach there. And then this one, will attach here. Okay. So we're making kind of a flippy, flippy pocket thing. And what I'm going to do is I will make this a side loading pocket. Okay. This one, um, I'm not sure. And actually I want to say, nope, 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 nope. Um, I'm thinking how the other one went. So I don't want to use the actual opening as the pocket. The reason for that is it is really hard once this is all glued together to, um, to get anything in and out of there. It's easier if you just um, sort of glue that down and create either a top loading or a side loading by just trimming off a sliver 
of your envelope. So that's what I'll do, and I'll show you that in the next video. Um, same thing here. I don't want to use. I don't want to use this. I could. This one's quite wide, and it would be a little bit okay. But I still feel like it's a struggle sometimes to um, to load like that when it's against the spine. So what I'll do is I'll cover this entirely, but leave it open, and then I'll make it a side loading this way. Okay. So then that one here. And then this one will go here or the other way around actually. Probably put that one first and then this one. Okay, so that will all attach to this side of, um, am I doing this right? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so those are the ones, so those three I will attach on this side. Then, on this side, and like I said, we'll we'll deal with this. It might just it might just come off, or I'll cut it, or whatever. Oh wait, I forgot one. So you'll have a flip, a flip, a flip, and then this one I attached here. Okay, oops. And again, I'll show you that when we get when we get there. And then on the back. I did, um, how did I do that? Let me think, let me think. Yep, this will go up here, okay. And this one, is that, yeah, I think that's, I think that's right, will go here. Or, you know, I might put this one here to cover, you know, to hide the window. And then it's a surprise when you open it. All right. So that is our envelope um, sort of page that then will attach, will attach this to that. And that will be um, our front cover with all of our envelopes all attached together. I might actually move one of those around, but anyway, okay. Do you kind of see, kind of see where we're going a little bit? Okay. And then this part, before we attach it to our front cover, this is gonna be where we sew in our journal signature. So, um, in the one I made for Susan, I just um, sort of staggered and stacked a whole bunch of vintage papers and um, tea dyed papers and things like that and made just a blank writing space journal. Um, and then after that is sewn in, we can, um, we can attach this piece and then we can start decorating and things like that. Okay, I hope this makes sense. I wanted to kind of do this first because I knew it was going to be kind of time consuming. Um, but if you can gather sort of, um, you know, your cardstock, cut, you know, get it cut. And then however many envelopes you want to use, that's completely up to you. Um, then, you know, get all those together. Um, and one more thing you'll want to gather soon um, is just... It depends on how you want to do it. I collaged on all the envelopes to cover up, um, you know, to pretty much cover them up, depending on what kind of envelopes they were. If you just want to cover them with pieces of cardstock um, and not collage, totally cool. If you're going to collage, you want to start gathering um, some things that you like that you might like to use um, to collage onto your envelopes. Uh, things like book pages and old receipts. Um, I have some Tim Holtz collage paper. I have some um, vintage wallpaper. Uh, this is Tim Holtz wallpaper. I've got old ledger and some um, rice paper here. So just, you know, kind of gather a stack of stuff <laughs> that you might want to use um, to collage or if you're just going to use cardstock to cover your envelopes, 
then you can just cut down, um, start cutting your cardstock to sort of fit your, um, your envelopes. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I really do. So you'll just want something, or if you want to leave them blank, like this envelope is totally fine the way it is. There's no writing on it. This one too. Um, you know, I want to cover this up obviously. Um, and then, you know, I'll want to cover, cover this up. But if you like the envelopes the way they are and you just want to leave them that way, that's totally cool as well. The best thing about junk journaling guys is that there's no right and there's no wrong way to do it at all. You can, as long as you're having fun and you are loving what you're doing, that's it. That's the only rule. I mean, and even that's not a rule. <laughs> it's just, you know, you don't want to be miserable and, um, you know, dread crafting. That's no fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, you don't have to do it the way you see it done. You can take what you see on my channel or any of the, you know, numerous other channels out there and you can make it your own. You can do, you know, whatever makes you happy. Um, the reason I, you know, changed my, my brand and my name to Junk Journal Inspirations um, is because I want to inspire you. That's my goal. Um, I don't want you to feel like you have to do it the exact same way that I do it. Um, and I don't want you, but you can, I mean, if you, you totally can, if you really like what I'm doing and you want to do it the exact same way, yay, that makes, you know, that makes me feel, um, that makes me feel good. Like that you would want to do that, but it's, it's not what you have. You don't have to do that. Um, I, I guess I'm just trying to say that there's, you know, I think that a lot of times we put pressure on ourselves to do something perfect um and then it becomes not fun and i i want you all to feel inspired to create um but i want it to be fun and not stressful for you all right enough i'll get off my soapbox <laughs> all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna stop this video so this was just kind of an introduction um supply gathering sort of video. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and film the next part where I will start sort of um, collaging my envelopes because we want to do that. It's much easier to do that before we um, start, you know, putting everything, putting all the envelopes together permanently. It's much easier to um, collage on them and, you know, cover them with papers or whatever you're going to do before we put it together. So that will be the next video. If you are not interested in watching that video, um, that, you know, you know, you know how to do that, or it's just not something, it, it, then skip it. Please don't feel like you ever have to sit through something that, you know, um, isn't helpful or inspiring to you. Um, also, if you are going to be crafting along with me, please feel free to pause the video um, if you need time to catch up or I'm going too fast um, or if I'm going too slow, hit the fast forward button. Um, I think, and I'm not very tech savvy, but I think if you're like watching on your phone, I think you can tap twice and it will um, go forward 15 seconds. I Don't hold me to that. I've never actually tried it. But I think that's a thing. So feel free to do that. Um, if you, you know, if you need to stop and take a break, turn it off and take a break. Um, it's, it's very easy to, to find, you know, a way to, to pace yourself that isn't stressful. Um, because I, you know, sometimes I go maybe too fast. Sometimes I go maybe too slow, depending on your skill level. Um, just do what you need to do so that you can um, have fun. Have fun, that's that's the takeaway today, guys. I want you to have fun. All right, I'm gonna stop babbling now <laughs> and I will be back in a day or so um, with the next video. And I hope you have a fabulous day, guys. And please take what you see and, and just be inspired. That's, I, 
I would love that. Um, if I could be inspiring to anyone, that would be fabulous. Um, leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this upcoming, um, you know, sort of tutorial craft with me series. And um, yeah, again, if you have any questions at all about what I said today, don't hesitate. Leave it in the comments. If you'd rather email me, that's fabulous too. You can find that in the description box. Or you can always contact me through Etsy if that's if you're more comfortable with that. Um, I'm on Facebook. You can find me pretty much anywhere. Just just let me know if you have a question. And you know, like like your teacher said, there are never never dumb questions ever. Um, we're you know just just ask. I'm not ever gonna you know not answer you. If I don't know the answer, I'll find it somewhere else. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. You have a fabulously crafty day. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Be safe, be healthy, and take care, guys. Bye.